Yanji Chimbo, to the Nig Mishan, Zoni, Molum Chimbo, Abjata, Bakar, Tangan Sandu, Shermado, Tumba, Tuji, Chanla, Kipshon, Sir. So, woman, Chuji, and the Padrana, the Zanji, Kenjing, or in a ransom, Chirkung, or some tons of birds, our Lamanam, La Guxion, Sir. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. <coughs> thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for Bodhicitta Sangha. Thank you, board members. Thank you, all volunteers. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Uh, getting ready for this teaching, right? this kind of meditation, uh, mindfulness and awareness. We're going to meditate about mindfulness and awareness, two things. So fortunate, we're very fortunate. I'm happy to have this opportunity. And all of us get together and uh, doing this kind of uh, meditation, spiritual activities. Um, so once in a while, it's really good, right? Get together, to practice. I mean, you do practice, right? Every day, but not together, so. Before, one thing you, uh, you have to remember, it is important to have good motivation, right? Good motivation uh, for your practice, for listen teaching, so for this kind of activities, not for today, but all, every, all the time. Motivation is is the essence, your practice. Because practicing uh, teachings um, with uh, uncertain motivation or with the, don't know how to create, how to correct mo motivation, especially selfish motivation will not bring much benefit. Mm. That's why, first of all, um, you remember the three spring methods. Uh, your great master Long Chimba says that, you know, begin with uh, the thought of bodhicitta means the heart of enlightenment. It is about compassion and bodhicitta, love, love, kindness. Correct your motivation. And then when you meditate, when you listen, do the main practice, try to without uh, lots of thoughts or concepts. And then conclude by ded dedicating the merit, right? So these three, we call three supreme method. That's how you practice. So <clears throat> very much necessary helps your, you know, uh, development on path of liberation or enlightenment. So this is, uh, this is not only, again, not only for today, but uh, um, it's uh, always important to remember three supreme methods. Correct your motivation, uh, then 
meditate without uh, negative thoughts, and then dedicate your merit, dedicate your practice, your meditation. So this is three spring method. So my teacher always say that, you know, correct your motivation, and then he say, don't harm others. So that's, you have to kind of, you know, remember all the time. So this, you know, correct your motivation and don't harm others. These two words we always heard, you know, whenever they um, start their teachings. So these two words are the essence of our practice, I think. So correct your motivation, don't harm others. It's kind of simple, but it's really important to remember. Because this is the, we call the heart of enlightenment, right? There are two things, right? Two aspects, heart of enlightenment. There is uh, the relative, uh, heart of enlightenment, then there is the ultimate heart of enlightenment. So, the relative uh, heart of enlightenment uh, is uh, kind of a strong desire to achieve enlightenment in order to benefit others. That's how you correct your motivation when you meditate. That's relative heart of enlightenment. So for this, you know, um, practice, the instructions are, you know, the, we just said, for a measurable, the prayers, you know, for boundless qualities. And then also we have very important taking and given meditation, practice. Um, and Pater Mbuchi always say that, um, you have to recognize all beings as your parents first. Second, then you remember their kindness. Second, then third, develop your, uh, um, the, the wish, uh, the return their kindness. So three things, right? So that's how you develop the relative, how you you know, the relative bodhicitta, the relative heart of enlightenment, uh, using this kind of instruction, change your mind. And then, of course, ultimate uh, uh, heart of enlightenment is the perfect realization of the nature of reality, the nature of uh, your mind. So that's the Buddhism, the, the combination of this. The first, the relative heart of enlightenment is uh, compassion. And the ultimate heart of enlightenment is emptiness. So this two combination, you put together, you practice, that is the enlightenment, liberation. Not separate. Emptiness and compassion cannot be separate. Emptiness and compassion, you know, um, together. Then you have ultimate enlightenment, uh, um, the heart of enlightenment practice, and then relative heart of enlightenment. So, very important. So, the first, uh, the relative heart of enlightenment really you have to practice, especially those who practice bodhicitta for measurables, give and take in, all these things. And then uh, ultimate heart of enlightenment is the instruction is the great perfection. So one, once we achieved these two, two stages, relative and ultimate, then what do we call it? We, we become a Buddha or enlightened being. So that's in general. Uh, now, for today's, the topic is about mindfulness and awareness. So first of all, you have to know that uh, we have two very important uh, 
mental states, right? We have the mindfulness and we have the awareness. The definition of mindfulness is not forgetting, right? Not forgetting what you are doing or pay attention to the main focus of the meditation. Uh, not only meditation, but whatever you, you know, whatever you're doing, pay attention, not forgetting. That's kind of a characteristic of mindfulness. It is the antidote, not forgetting, right? Um, remember last time we talked about, it's like, you know, uh, your baby tied by a rope, you know, so the baby can't go anywhere. You just pay attention to, you know, whatever you're doing. Uh, so you protect, you protect your mind, you protect your body, you protect your baby, right? That, that is kind of mindfulness. And then awareness is uh, you have to check your baby, even though like uh, the baby tied with a rope, but you have to check, make sure that he's okay, right? So everything is like, you know. So you are mindful when you meditate, you are mindful, but still you have to recognize the main thing, the, you know, the essence. You have to make sure everything is perfect, everything is, uh, you know, good, you know. Um, that is, that is awareness. For example, when you meditate on your on, on, on mindfulness, you have to focus on the object. You cannot forget the object, right? That is mindfulness. I mean, I'm trying to um, tell you what is different between the mindfulness and awareness. Sometimes people don't know what is different between these two, you know. So it's, it's a different, a Buddhist point of view, there's different definition, different characteristics. So, so um, you don't forget, you are concentrated on the object when you meditate, for example. And you also have to continually to uh, recognize and pay attention to your uh, these distractions, you know. We have lots of like, you know, dullness, uh, agitations, you know, lots of thoughts and, uh, you know, everything, you know, these disturbing emotions. When you meditate, you know, they arise, you know. So that you have to recognize the disturbing emotions. That part is, I think it's awareness. So easy way to explain the difference between these two is the mindfulness is like a rope and awareness is like a, a like mother, you know, watch the baby, like watcherman, you know, to understand. And uh, very important, these two uh, mental states, right, very um, significant to develop um, in your daily life. And uh, um, in order to create in sort of perfect virtue, and develop sort of beneficial attitudes. Um, abandon the negative actions, such as like, you know, hurt others, etc. It's very important to um, remember these two mental states, you know, mindfulness, awareness. Develop your positive uh, attitude, uh, abandon negative everything. So, you know, you need these two, mindfulness and awareness. I think it's very important. So, therefore, I think we're very, uh, 
fortunate that uh, we have this, uh, you know, we have chance, you know, practice. Um, first, I want you to know that uh, what is mindfulness, what is awareness. And then once you understand, then we're going to meditate. Okay, I give you the instructions, you know, how to meditate. <laughs> Actually, the most of time, meditation is, uh, is insight, the mental activity, right? Even like a body is, you know, perfect, you know, um, comfortable in perfect position, but the mind is thinking something else, then you know, uh, you are not meditating, you know. When you practice meditation, we know our minds. We just can't control it, right? So we need, uh, that's why we need this mindfulness and awareness practice. Actually, mindfulness, awareness, both, I think, when you meditate, you know, um, helps, you know, your mind, of course, be stable, calm, and also, I think, your body, you know, you understand what's going on with your body, so I think it's good. So... Um, Buddhism, we call it first, uh, you have to, in order to understand mindfulness and awareness, uh, you have to first listen the teachings, right? You have to listen teaching, uh, understand the definitions, um, and then you have to think investigate, right? Develop your understanding, you know, by thinking about mindfulness, the definition, the characteristics, awareness, everything like you have to think. Then you meditate. After that, meditate. You know, you integrate what, what, what you have learned, right? So you put into your meditation. So that is that is meaning of meditation, uh, open awareness and develop the mindfulness. So meditation is um, the best method, you know, to develop your attitude, our attitude. So meditation is really uh, getting to know yourself, ourselves, by examining um, our personal relationship, actually. But I think it's very important. We start with a very simple method, you know. Um, today, like for example, when we meditate, on this too, we are using, we're going to use our breath, you know. So this is very simple. Uh, we sit and then focus on breath. That's how you develop first, develop the mindfulness. When you think about your breath, you know, Every breath we take is a really gift, the best, if you recognize it in our life. This is the best gift that we have, naturally, pure, and always with us. You don't have to sort of visualize something is 
usually you don't feel, you don't experience. It's nature. It's simple, but it's profound. When we begin to uh, view the world in this way, seeing every this situation is part of uh, nature process, and we bring this sort of attitude to our practice of meditation. In this way, we see meditation as a process of nature evolution rather than seeing it as a something like extraordinary, you know. So these are just uh, nature things, you know, in our life. And we all have to, uh, we all have to breathe, right? Breathe in, breathe out all the time, but we're not really focused on it. We all have that. We all we need to take a we need to take breath. We all have mind. So these nature things are starting point out developing the mindfulness and awareness through the practice of meditation. So we have a mind, whatever you thought, mind, and then we have a breath. So you have to combine these two nature gift together. So when you sit down, and to meditate. Actually, you are making a connection with everything. You are making a connection with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, uh, with the cushion, with your body, with your mind, everything with your environment. So that is your meditation. Meditation is your really connecting with everything. And now, when you meditate on mindfulness, awareness, the best way to think, develop mindfulness, awareness, um, sort of integrate, you know, with everything, bring into your life, not something else. I'm, I'm, you know, when you meditate or when we talking about this kind of meditation, we are talking about our life, right? So therefore, you know, you, when you meditate, simple and profound something with your life, you know, not something that you are not connecting, you know. So in that sense, the teachers always say that meditation is like uh, collecting, you know, vegetable from your backyard, from your garden, you know, um, rather than going to, you go to big supermarket and, you know, buy, different vision because you are not connecting so it's you something is in your life that is your meditation you know so you have to think that how do you build a bridge between sitting practice of meditation and meditation in action 
and mindfulness in everyday life. Because you, you know, you act every day, right? So therefore, action without mindfulness, action without awareness, is like, you know, you're planting like a dead tree. It, it's, it's, you know, it will never grow, right? You plant a dead tree tree it never grow so therefore very important and any action with mindfulness and awareness it's like planting a living tree grow all the time endlessly right so therefore this kind of practice meditation is a process of training your life, your mind, your body, your attitude, everything. And this doesn't mean that immediately, right, immediately develop or success. It takes time. We should expect lots of challenges when you meditate. It takes a long time. And we have to sort of willing to go through the whole process. You have to sort of promise and commitment that no matter what, it's, it's difficult. I'm not going to give it up. It's difficult, you know. Meditation is not so easy. Not many people can do. That's why we have very few good practitioners. Because most people can't, you know, accept, can't be like willing to go through all this difficult, difficult and uh, challenges, you know. Because we know that all this, you know, past, for example, all this great, Great meditators, great teachers went through difficult challenges. That's why we know. So we need to develop ourselves over a period of time and keep our commitment. Very important. Sometimes you will find the benefit from your meditation. Sometimes you find nothing. Then you lose, right? So it doesn't matter. It's difficult. It's easy, just keep going. Just keep going. And then at the end, eventually, yes, relative enlightenment, ultimate enlightenment. Definitely will get there. So, you know, this is samsara, we call it, right? Don't think that samsara is negative. If we control our mind, if we have uh, nature, our nature mind, if we have recognition of this nature mind, then samsara is, samsara is enlightenment, right? Otherwise, samsara is kind of uh, no essence, right? Yesterday, I watched a little bit about the inauguration of the president, you know, and then the, um, at the end, the former president said goodbye to Washington, D.C., you know. Um, 
and he left. It reminded me that, you know, these four ends. Do you remember? We have four ends. The end of high is fall. It's fall down. It's loose, right? Then the end of uh, gathering is separation. It's just how it is. You don't want. And I can tell they both yesterday, like very, you know, emotionally, you know, it's kind of sad to leave from the White House. But it's just, it's, it's nature, you know. You lose. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You, you, you are not going to stay there forever. It's impossible. The end of birth is death. We're going to die, even though you don't want. It is. That's just our life, right? But I don't know. one thing is you never lose. One thing is you never lose. Always there. It's your heart of enlightenment. Heart of enlightenment. Never lose. Within us all the time. But it's difficult to understand. That's why we have very difficult and challenge when you go through all these meditations, right? Once you get there, of course, then you are a successful person. But until then, it's difficult. So that's why lots of people lose their commitment, lose their confidence, because meditation is not necessarily always, always necessarily fun and enjoy and happy, right? It's difficult, so you have to really accept that. So, you know, there are many, many different, right? Different meditations and different sort of stages of meditations. First, do you meditate on this, then second stage, go there, like that. So many, many, many. So we need, for example, first, you know, the first stage is develop, develop your meditation, development, the basic sort of mindfulness and awareness, which you can practice in a group, right? And you can practice individually. So the basic point of mindfulness is to be completely and totally in touch with what happens in your mind. Not only your mind, your body, your environment, everything around you. So the method of mindfulness meditation is Just I said that focus on your breath. Therefore, we call this meditation, mindfulness meditation, peaceful living meditation. Sometimes they call it peaceful med living meditation because associated with the development of peace, when you focus on your mindfulness, everything is really peace, peaceful. Therefore, you know, but you can't get this kind of pra practice, this kind of peace, you know, without applying, uh, what do you call it? Self-discipline. Self-discipline is very important, I think. So once you understand the difference between mindfulness and awareness, then not enough that. Not enough. Just to understand. Not enough. So we have to meditate. Meditate on 
mindfulness and awareness. Just as I said, I would like you to practice a um, combination of mindfulness and awareness by focus on your breath today, okay? <laughs> This is the perfect way to practice, because easy. Not just easy, but it's really profound, I think. So when you, when you breathe in, there are two things you need to uh, focus. When you breathe in, focus on your breath, and then pause, and pause for a second, and just relax there. So when you breathe in, this is it brings you really this, you know, calm and peace, relax. And then recognize, right? Recognize your thoughts. Then breathe out. And not just breathe out, but let your thoughts and everything go. Let your breath, let your thoughts dissolve into relaxation into this peacefulness. Do you understand? So then, simply relax. Simply relax in there as much as you can. Then you have to also try again, many, many times like that. Breathe Because you breathe out, you breathe in, right? So breathe out. Recognize your thoughts, dis let dissolve into the relaxation, and then meditate on that. When you breathe in, then you focus your breath and ju just relax there. So this is the combination of mindfulness and awareness practice. I do this every day. Now you see there is a relaxation. This relaxation is mindfulness. Why do I say this, 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 this is combination, mindfulness, awareness? Because the relaxation is the mindfulness. And then not only that, you have recognition. Recognition is the part of the awareness practice, right? Awareness practice. So you see, these two combinations is very important. Practice. And that's very, it's very in general. If you can go deeper, meditation, you know. And if you have, uh, most of you, you can, right? Some, you know, uh, more, you have more experience about deeper sort of meditation. Then when you breathe in, turn your attention to the clarity of, what do you call it, the awareness. And awareness of your mind. When we say your mind, your mind is whatever you are experiencing at that moment, in this case. There's nothing else. Whatever you experience. And aware of your sensations in your body, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, everything so forth, you know. And then you 
focus your attention on this sort of clear awareness when you breathe in. This is a little bit deeper meditation than I said the first, right? And your recognition is totally clear and pure at this time, this moment. Means without disturbing emotions. You can see it. You, you can actually experience, you know, if you, if you pay attention your, on your awareness, you can experience it. You, you can see it when you breathe in. And when you breathe out, let your mind and breath dissolve into this clarity of your awareness and recognize that experience, the nature of awareness. Okay? And concentrate on that as much as you can. Because the point is that you can bring a sense of clarity and relaxation into your experience if you do this. Breathe in and breathe out meditation. So which is your mindfulness and your awareness practice in this case? Now you see your thoughts, your breath, you know, all this exists only in this present moment if you are connecting this moment, everything, with your both body, mind, and with everything, with around, you know, your environment. If you think more about breathe in, breathe out, it's, it, this is a lot, you know. This give you everything. I mean, you know, like when you breathe out, you know, you can think about, okay, one moment is gone. When you breathe in, okay, there is another moment here. You know. Actually, that is our life, right? Breathe out. It's gone. So it just continues, you know. And uh, when we meditate, when I say it's it's very difficult challenge, that's because we are thought, the thoughts and emotions, you know, distraction, distraction. These are what definitely arise right when you meditate, but you don't just do not react them, you know or do not follow them. Just, you know, watch, you know, watch them sort of come and go, you know, with your mindfulness and awareness, right? So come, let them come, let them go. Uh, just don't, do not try to control them. Just uh, this is a kind of nature, right? We have the, the just our breath, and our thoughts, and the mind, everything is like, nature. So you have to just connect with that nature, right? Just let them come, let them go without sort of, what do you call it, judgment, right? Just to let, let them be, you know, and uh, try to find on this, you know, the recognition, the clarity, part of this, this is, I'm talking, this is part of Awareness, practice. Understand? You can experience. It's, a, it's very simple. I like it. And it's really profound meditation. I think we'll do that for today, okay? Then you can see how much you, you develop. And you can see your mind, your body, everything's like, you know, how much you have a capacity, right? Stable, stable mind, peaceful mind, but all this through your meditation. So 
So we have to sort of grow and develop this kind of meditation practice. This is not totally new, right? So maybe don't think that, okay, I've done this, I've done this meditation, I know this. No, you don't. When, when you hear these things, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But when you, you put into this instruction, into your meditation, it's not that easy. So then you know where you are, you know. So just, just uh, try and, uh, and 15 minutes at least, okay? Good. So, first of all, think about heart of enlightenment, correct your motivation. and try to connect with your nature life your breath set up your mind you know for a second you know you don't have to think about mindfulness awareness just to relax and then breathe in Breathe out. Once your mind, your body is kind of calm, established that way, and then you can think about mindfulness, awareness, this combination, meditate on right? You are very now you are very relaxed but also there is what do you call it recognition it's kind of difficult to explain explain but you know when you meditate on this you can see it this you can kind of, uh, you can see through your meditation, okay, this part is mindfulness, this part is awareness. So try to bring them together, not kind of separate, okay, this part is mindful, this part is aware, not like that. Bring them together and then meditate on that for a few minutes, please.